So the Las Vegas Raiders superstar pass rusher Max Crosby was on his podcast and he was asked a specific question about some of the quarterbacks coming out of the 2025 NFL Draft, specifically the two top rated quarterbacks in Cam Ward and Shadir Sanders. And he had some interesting things to say about these guys. But it's not just the fact that there are interesting comments that he had. It's the fact that this guy's the leader of the Las Vegas Raiders. And there's a chance this guy knows something that some of us don't know. But I want you guys to listen in to something specific that this guy ultimately says. I like what Colorado's doing, bro. Five and two. They're cooking. Miami's fucking cooking. But yeah, you know what we need to do? I'm going to just say this right now. I'm going to speak into existence. Please. Cam Ward followed the boy. He you know, mentioned our podcast. Mm-hmm. Shador, obviously me and him. It's my mm-hmm. boy. We need to have them after the season get on our show and bid for why they should be the first quarterback take. And I want that to happen oh, on the rush. And yeah. we will make that happen. And I'm speaking into existence, and I feel like it would be f- golden. And we that need to make that electric. happen. That would be I love yeah, that. So I want to see some classic shit you talk. you want to sack more between the two of them. Yeah, I'm going to bully both of them. But, yeah, you know, <laughs> hopefully one of them, you know, they, they – I, I don't know. One of them might be my quarterback, so I can't fully bully them, you know. But in practice, mm-hmm. you know what time it is. Clip it. <laughs> yeah, you take better, that to the headline, but use that positive news. No, hundred percent. They already know what it is. If you yeah, come to great, the Raiders, man. you will be hit as a quarterback in practice. So f- your red jersey, it's all good, it's all love. But I will not hurt you. I'll just let you feel that. You know. Now, if you guys missed it, Max Crosby basically just put it in that clip that one of those two guys might actually be his quarterback. One of them might be my quarterback, so I can't fully bully them, you know. So Cam Ward, Shadir Sanders, there's a real chance that one of those two end up being the Las Vegas Raiders starting quarterback. Here's the crazy thing. I'm not saying that this means Max Crosby's not, you know, showing support for the current guys that are kind of in the room right now. That's not what I'm saying. But there's a good chance that Max Crosby has had conversation with Tom Telesco. There's a chance that this guy has had conversations with Antonio Pierce and some of the other guys, right? Mark Davis, potentially. And I know all of us know that the Raiders need a quarterback. We need to go out and draft the quarterback. But when current players are starting to say, especially the guy at the top of your team, the leader on your roster, it's kind of interesting, right? You got to note it down. You got to at least consider what this guy is saying, right? The Raiders actually might really be, you know, wanting to get that quarterback. And the thing is, is, you know, early on in the process, this quarterback class was was a lot higher than where it's kind of at right now. Uh, probably after the first two to three weeks, there was a lot of hype. People are like five, six, seven quarterbacks in potential in the first round. And now we're hearing things a little bit differently as the season's kind of going on. You know, we have more tape. Teams are starting to put their analysis out there. People are starting to talk to scouts and those type of things. Uh, and I had talked about this about two weeks back. I had personally heard that this quarterback class is not as good as what it was initially. Now, there's talented players, but truth be told, there's probably only one first-round quarterback in this class, specifically grade-wise. And right now, that's going to be Miami's quarterback, Cam Ward. Right? Cam Ward's probably the only quarterback with a first-round grade right now by NFL scouts. There are other quarterbacks that will probably go in the first round, right? Like Shadir Sanders will probably be a first-round pick. As will guys like Jalen Milrow or maybe even Quinn Ewers or Carson Beck if they choose to come out. But it's not guaranteed that these guys are first-round talent, right? And keep in mind, first-round talent versus being picked in the first round are two different things. But Max Rosby apparently has heard some stuff, and uh, to me, it's just interesting with what he ultimately put on his podcast. And you also have to love Max Crosby. Uh, he said that he's basically going to bully both of them regardless, you know, and, and he's not necessarily saying if they're on his team, he's going to bully them. He's just saying that generally speaking, when those two guys get into the NFL, he's going to bully both of them. And I love that, man, because we've seen so many clips of Max Crosby bullying people, right? Like we, we saw the clip of him yelling at Bo Nix, right? We heard him yelling at Bo Nix and, uh, to me, Max Crosby is just one of those guys that's different, and I love the, the the way Max Crosby is as a player. And I do think the Raiders got to go out and actually get a quarterback. You know, we brought in Desmond Ritter just a couple days back, and I do like Ritter. I do think he has some upside, but let's just be honest. Desmond Ritter is not going to end up being a top-five quarterback. He's not going to take the Raiders into the Super Bowl. It's a very, very, very unlikely chance that ends up happening. You know, there's two types of, of bust quarterbacks. Right. There's a bucket with guys like Sam Darnold. There's a bucket with guys like Baker Mayfield. Those are guys that are talented, but early on in their career, they really weren't able to really get it figured out. But they're guys that develop later on in their career. And then ultimately, they're able to end up having success and potentially lead a team into the playoffs, maybe make a Super Bowl push. And then there's guys in a different bucket. Right. And those are guys like Trey Lance, guys like Justin Fields. Those guys just aren't that very good. And those guys are generally speaking busts. I don't think those quarterbacks can ultimately be saved. Maybe I'm wrong on those two guys, but 
generally speaking, I do think a guy like Desmond Ritter, you know, we don't know which bucket he's in, right? Maybe he ends up bouncing back, and maybe this is the time he bounces back, but he's still fairly young. And at the end of the day, he has Luke Getze, and I just don't see Desmond Ritter overcoming Luke Getze. To me, I think with Ritter, if he ever does actually get a shot, and let's be honest, there's a chance this guy is actually going to end up playing, right? Like Gardner Minshew has been really, really bad for the Raiders. Our offensive line has had its struggles. Uh, The run game has gotten a little bit better, as has the run blocking, but pass pro is still kind of an issue. And I think our scheme is still a bad scheme, however you look at it. You know, people will say, hey, the quarterback has to push the ball downfield, and that's it, right? If he's not able to push the ball downfield, then that's on the quarterback. But the coach also has to design a certain offense where it's not super easy to predict. You know, Luke Etsy calls these plays where you have a screen pass designed to the left, and if the defense blitzes, then you have a hot read within that where they're going to essentially push the ball onto either some sort of short cross or maybe it's some sort of vertical seam or whatever it is. Luke Etsy has gotten so predictable at this point that teams are able to blitz and guess the hot route. And that right there to me is, is kind of sad, right? So to me, I think Luke Etsy's a really, really poor coach. So even if Desmond Ritter comes in, I don't really see him doing a whole lot for the Raiders. Now, I do think long term wise, you know, I would personally rather keep Desmond Ritter on the team as opposed to a guy like Gardner Minshew or Aiden McConnell. I just don't think there's a lot of upside with those two guys. I do think Gardner Minshew has a little bit of upside, but I don't think Gardner Minshew is ever going to be able to get a, a team, you know, over the top unless he has Kyle Shanahan or Andy Reid as his his offense coordinator or play caller. And at this point, I just I just don't don't see that being the case. With Desmond Ritter, it's a little bit different, right? You can still kind of mold this guy who's a third-round pick. Uh, He has shown flashes on tape. I think you can still mold him into a good quarterback, potentially, and then he has the traits, right? And I think that's the the element of why I would ultimately keep this guy. Plus, this guy is kind of, I don't want to use the word fired up, but this guy obviously understands the situation he's kind of in. This could be the final time he ever plays in the NFL. Uh, He actually was asked a question in his pressure with the Las Vegas Raiders. It was actually a post I was a locker room presser, I have to say. Uh, but listen into what he had to say because this made me feel feel kind of excited for Desmond Ritter. You know, like how do you kind of keep fueling yourself to look for opportunities to be able to start on a football team? Uh, because I was just cut um, mm-hmm. three months ago. Um, that should be enough, you know, opportunity, enough motivation to keep me going anytime. Uh, you know, I, I, back home, you know, I, I got the call and everything. And, uh, you know, my, my daughter's like, Daddy, where are you going? I'm like, got to go to Vegas. Uh, but I know I do everything for them. I do everything for my family. So this is just another opportunity to go out and prove to them, prove to myself, prove to everyone that I can be out here and go do this. Yeah, Desmond, uh, you know, to that point, does it, does it leave like an, an extra chip on your shoulder? I know that's a cliche, but like something to prove to the rest of the league. Yeah, for sure. Um, man, it's not even to the rest of the league. It's to myself. Um, I know what I can do. I know what I can be. Um, now I just got to go do it. How do you think? So there you guys have it, right? So Desmond Ritter is kind of letting it be known, uh, kind of how he felt about the process. You know, he didn't know what the future held for him. You know, he talks to his daughter and he doesn't really know where he's going to end up. That to me seems like a guy that's motivated, right? And I can appreciate the hell out of a guy like that. So I do hope Desmond Ritter has success. I know people are going to say, don't be excited for this. The Raiders season's over. I'm always excited for Raiders game, man. I, I, I can't lie to you guys. I always get excited. Uh, you know, at this point, I think the Raiders should just add a new quarterback every three weeks. So even if Desmond Ritter sucks, at least there's a little bit of hype in like three or four weeks and we can be excited to potentially watch something. Uh, but, uh, you know, Max Crosby may be ultimately saying we're going to get a quarterback. Desmond Ritter might get an opportunity. Maybe he doesn't. But one thing I do think is this quarterback class isn't that good. And even if it does end up being good, that's also going to be dependent on if the quarterbacks that are are actually juniors or redshirt juniors if those guys actually choose to come out, right? Because not every quarterback will come out, right? There's guys like Quinn, uh, Quinn Ewers, who is a, a true junior, right? He's truly in his third year in college. So if he wants to come out this year, it means he ha- would have to graduate early from, from Texas. What if he's not on track to graduate, right? Then he's not going to be able to come out. You have to graduate early. So it's a condition of coming out into the NFL draft. You have to graduate college, essentially, or be four years uh, removed from high school, four years in college. Uh, Quinn Ewers could easily go back to college, and he might not be with Texas. Maybe he transfers somewhere somewhere else, and a team out there like Sacramento State gives him $10 million to come play. You never know, right, with, with, with these quarterbacks. Miller Moss is another guy who's first-year starter. He's a junior. He might not come out either, right? There's upside, but you don't really know. Drew Aller, another guy out of Penn State, 
if you guys want to know some more of my analysis on some of these these college quarterbacks coming out that the Raiders might actually target I'm going to link a, a video down in the comments below uh, I just posted this video earlier today so uh, this is on my second YouTube channel that I post college content on and we're going to kind of talk about these quarterbacks so go check that channel out subscribe to it support uh, another thing I did earlier today was I dropped a video of DJ Glaze, and we're going to kind of end this video talking about DJ Glaze. You know, DJ Glaze is a very, very interesting player. Coming out of Maryland, when I watched his tape, one of the things I thought to myself was this guy kind of reminds me of a, a guy that is going to be a guard at the next level. And that too, I didn't watch a lot of his tape. I think I only ever really watched like one or two games. Um, and when I did watch those games, right, they're the games that were like widely available, right? It's like the Ohio State game, and I think there's one other thing was like Iowa, or it might have been another team. When I watched DJ Glaze, I said, I don't, I don't really see the upside with this guy. He doesn't move very well, right? Like in pass pro, he wasn't super quick, he wasn't super explosive. I said, I'm not sure if this guy's gonna actually end up being a tackle at the next level. You know, some of the best guards in the NFL right now are guys that were former tackles in college, and then they transitioned to guard, right? Guys like Tyler Smith. Uh, we saw guys like, um, uh, you know, Tyler Smith go from left tackle to left guard. We've seen other guys as well transition from tackle to guard, right? We've seen guys like Zach Martin, who's a tackle in college. We've seen guys like Samuel Cosby and Tevin Jenkins, who are also tackles in college, and they're phenomenal guards in the NFL. Some of the best guards in the NFL are, are tackles, and the fact that the Raiders took a tackle in the third round, I almost thought DJ Glaze was going to end up being a guard for the Raiders. And I felt that way specifically because generally most third round or later tackles don't pan out in the NFL. Most starting tackles in the NFL, majority of them, are first or second round players. And majority are actually first round picks, right? Uh, so to me, I didn't think that the Raiders drafting DJ Glaze actually meant this guy would end up being a tackle, but he's actually surprised me a little bit at the tackle position. Uh, again, I made a film breakdown on DJ Glaze in full on the Football Scout channel. I'll pin that as, as well in the comments. There'll be two videos pinned in the comments. Uh, one talking about quarterbacks on one channel, one talking about DJ Glaze on my other channel. My other channel, I talk mostly offensive line. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a huge offensive line guy. So DJ Glaze to me is an interesting player, right? Because on one end, he shows upside. And you can see it visibly with this guy. On one play, he'll come out there and he'll double team with Jordan Meredith. And these guys will move a guy off, off the spot, right? On one play, he'll get out there and he'll do a great job in his vertical set. He's explosive. He's quick out of his stance. Uh, his hands land well, and, you know, he drops the hands and gets them back up, right? He's not leaning too often. Uh, and then on the other play, you know, it's inconsistent. He'll get crossed by a guy that's a little bit faster. And I think there's just some little things that this guy has to clean up, but I think there's real upside with him. So just a couple of things, just talk about, like, some of the things I think he really has to clean up. You know, one of the things I noticed with DJ Glaze specifically against the Steelers, and I know this is, you know, this is a bad, con you know, this is a bad thing to talk about because he went up against TJ Watt. But the honest thing is, is DJ Glaze got his ass kicked by TJ Watt. I know PFF tells you otherwise, but PFF is lying in this instance, right? And PFF also doesn't take into consideration some of the things like chips and double teams and those type of things. Antonio Pierce talked about that in his presser. I talked about it on Twitter as well. I think literally like 30 minutes before Antonio Pierce actually, you know, made it known because, you know, people were, it was going viral. People were like, hey, PFF saying this guy had a phenomenal game against TJ Watt. The thing is, is, there were a lot of chips in that game, and he lost to T.J. Watt in a, in a similar manner, right? Which was T.J. Watt was using his quickness, he was using his bend, and he was, you know, either hitting him with an outside move, jumping back to the inside, and he was just changing it up. And we saw that same thing happen with Jared Verse, right? Which was the Rams defensive end, right? Or the outside linebacker that the Rams have. Jared Verse is a rookie, right? He's just like D.J. Glaze. They're both rookies. And Jared Verse was essentially doing the same exact thing, what which was what TJ Watt was kind of doing as well. Now Watt's different. He's already considered one of the top two or three guys at his position. But Verse did the same thing. And if you guys go back even to the past games, right? And you guys watch DJ Glaze against guys that are quick, guys that are shiftier. DJ Glaze has losing snaps against those guys. And DJ Glaze is not super explosive. Right? He's not super fast in his movement. Now, he's fast getting out of his stance, but that's not the same as being able to change direction. You know, if you get into your vertical set and you're looking at this defensive end, when that defensive end jumps to the inside, you have to be able to mirror that, right? You have to think about a move this guy's jumping to the inside. Your brain has to process it and then you have to do that movement. But what happens when this guy fakes it to the inside and then quickly jumps back to the outside? Well, if you're not a fast processor, if you can't move fast enough, you're not going to be able to, to block that guy. 
And there are multiple plays on tape where Jared Verse was able to beat uh, their, or, uh, uh, DJ Glaze. There are multiple plays where TJ Watt kind of beat him with, the, with those same things. And the thing is, we don't have a lot of snaps of, of DJ Glaze at this point, right? He's still very, very young. We have like 200 snaps, if that. Always got to factor in the scheme, right? What, what a team's going to try to do. You know, when, when the Raiders played uh, the Chargers in week one, everybody was like, oh, uh, Joe Walsh shut down Max Crosby. Max Crosby got shut down and, and this and that. Um, the Chargers came out and double teamed Max Crosby on almost every single play, right? So it's not that Joe Walsh shut down Max Crosby. It's that they double teamed him on every single play. Uh, if you go out there and, and say, hey, we're going to put Stephon Gilmore and Devin McCourty over, over the top, and we're going to double team Justin Jefferson 100% of the time, no matter what it is, and he gets shut down, that doesn't mean that Stephon Gilmore by himself shut down uh, Justin Jefferson. That means that they double teamed him. They schemed him up, right? So with DJ Glaze, they're, they're kind of helping him on some of those 200 snaps where they're double teaming, they're chipping, and they should do that, right? You have to do that with, with young guys. But I also don't want people to not have the realistic expectations that DJ Glaze is still a rookie. He still has to develop. He still has to get better, right? Because he's not ready today to, to be that all pro caliber tackle. Uh, I'll give you guys a great example of something that I feel like you know, people are being more aware to at this point, and I've already kind of touched on it, but, you know, there are NFL schemes out there where as an, as, as an offensive line, you're, you're getting chip help on every single play, right? You're going to run three wide receivers and the other two receivers are running back your tight ends that are supposed to release into routes. They're chipping on every single play, right? You can have an offensive line that has all that chip help. And then on the other side, you might have an offensive line that's going to five man pass protect like the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions are coming out there and their five offensive tackles are expected to block the four defensive ends 100% of the time, not 100%, but like 90% of the time you're, they're, they're five man pass protecting, which means that Jared Goff has five receivers running routes, right? And that's a big difference when it comes to offensive line, right? You can have an offensive line where there's like six, seven, eight guys potentially blocking on every given pass play, or you can have an offensive line where there's only five guys blocking essentially on every single pass play. And uh, with the Raiders, you know, with their Munford, we did that a lot last year. And I think this year people recognize a little bit that their Munford had his struggles. I think DJ Glaze has looked really good at times, but we have to still recognize he's a rookie. And and depending on the scheme, you know, it could it could be a lot different. Right? It could be better, it could be worse or whatever. Um, and I also want to just, just put this last thing out there. Uh, I do think DJ Glaze has real upside, right? I think this guy has real potential and he has real upside to be a good tackle in the NFL. But he does have to get stronger. And that was one of the things that I noticed. You know, when it comes to pass pro, sometimes he did get bull rushed a little bit, especially against guys that were faster. And I think that happens sometimes because you think these guys that are faster are going to hit you just like outside moves and inside moves. They're going to use their quickness. And then when they go to the power move, you're not really expecting it, right? As opposed to guys that are a little bit slower, guys that are a little bit stronger. DJ Glaze has actually had a lot of success against some of those guys, right? DJ Glaze has had a lot of success against guys that are not super quick and super explosive. Um, and keep in mind, you know, every defensive end that this guy's going to go up against is going to be different. Half of them are super fast, like TJ Watt, like Malcolm Kuntz, and the other half are probably going to be on the slower side. If not, they're somewhere in between, like how Max Crosby's kind of in between. Um, I think DJ Glaze has real upside, right? And uh, another thing he does really well is he uses his hands well. And I think as a tackle, if you can use your hands well, you can have success. Now, he does have to continue to develop the advanced elements of it, right? Like a slingshot and snatching and forking and utilizing like the latch technique. I think he can continue to improve those little things, but I don't think this offensive line coach is going to be able to do that. I think the Raiders current offensive line coach is kind of a bad coach. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where guys develop, right? And how guys kind of get better because Dylan Parham does look better, but I think that's more of because of the scheme, and I think him as an individual player, I think Dylan Parham's a pretty good player. Uh, Jordan Meredith also looked good, right? I should just kind of mentioned that, but uh, I'm excited to continue to watch DJ Glaze, right? I'm not going to crown DJ Glaze yet, but I will watch him as he continues to develop, and we'll see where he kind of ends up. I think the worst thing Raider fans can do, and I think some people did this with their Munford, and you guys should call those people out. <laughs> they said this guy's an all-pro tackle. This guy's the future. He's the franchise tackle. And he's not that, right? Darren Munford's not that good. In fact, DJ Glaze, a rookie, has replaced Darren Munford because Munford's not that good. I would have made the argument Munford's like a top, a bottom 10 starting tackle, right? 64 guys, uh, he's a bottom 10, I would say, essentially, right? And uh, 
DJ Glaze isn't great today, but he has traits, he has upside. So hopefully we can develop that, and hopefully he's our franchise at the tackle position. Now I, I should just wrap it up with this. I think if DJ Glaze does not work out at tackle, I think he has all pro caliber as a, uh, all pro caliber potential as a guard. Right? He's long, he's lengthy, and he has power when he's going up against guys that are slower, and you can see it. Right? When he's down blocking, when he's reach blocking, when he's double teaming. He has upside, right? And you see that, right? So uh, I think there's a chance this guy moves to guard one day in the future if he doesn't work out as a tackle and he's going to be a very, very good guard. I also think at that point, we'll probably move Jackson Parrish Johnson back to center and we'll probably keep a mixture of Dylan Parham and Jordan Meredith because I think both guys are pretty solid. I think the Raiders' offense line is in a good spot, right? I think once they figure out that right tackle position, we reshift guys to the center position, get rid of one guy that I think is kind of the weak link on this offensive line. I think the Raiders offense line will actually be pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys next time with another video.